If there is anything Clan Jade Falcon has lacked through the course of its history, it definitely isn't a good light scout mech. Between the Mist Lynx, the Vixen, the Kit Fox, one might be forgiven for thinking that all the possible light spots had been filled. However, we do have at least one more mech to play with, which tended to show up among Falcon's second line forces more than any other clan. Weighing in at 20 tons, the Howler, or sometimes referenced by the Inner Sphere designation Baboon, was a frequent sight on Falcon Garrison Worlds. Though not cherished like the Omnimax, it carved out a niche among the second line units where mech warriors sang its praises. First produced in 2871, the Howler was originally a totem mech designed for Clan Fire Mandrill. This explains the mech's seemingly oversized arms and overall kind of simian look. However, just four years after development, the production line on the much contested clan homeworld planet Marshall would be claimed by the Jade Falcons in a trial of possession. Their new property secured, most of the new Howlers ended up in Clan Jade Falcon's Tumen as a key second line scout mech. It was inexpensive and had a shallow learning curve, so the Howler ended up being the first battle mech for many aspiring mech warriors in Clan Jade Falcon Sibcos. Constructed around a Type A endosteel frame and a standard Firebox 140 fusion engine, the Howler is built light but cheaply. The XL engine was likely tempting, but there was little justification for what was already seen as a second line battle mech that wouldn't be operating near any front lines. The mech's upper torso was designed to maximize movement and thus earned the extended torso twist quirk. It also has a low and narrow profile with multiple examples of the mech being able to crouch and significantly reduce its profile to avoid being spotted. The max speed of the Howler hit 118 km per hour, which is sufficient to keep it out of harm's way most of the time. The ABM principle still applies, always be moving. When you're in a 20 ton battle mech, speed is love, speed is life. The communication system is a JNE integrated, which isn't surprising for a Jade Falcon battle mech. The targeting and tracking system is a Mark IV TTS, which is more than adequate for the Howler. In order to buy just a little bit more space in the mech, three tons of H-17 ferrofibrous armor shaves off a little bit of weight for use elsewhere. If you're looking for fancy electronics packages or active probes, you're best off seeking another battle mech. What you're going to get with the Howler is simplicity and economy. However, fans of the guillotine and Warhammer will be pleased to know that this plucky light mech does have a searchlight on that left shoulder. So it's got that going for it, which is nice. The three tons of ferrofibrous armor are not enough to take more than a few glancing shots or a direct medium laser hit, so the mech warriors who are assigned to the Howler know that avoiding incoming fire is the key to survival. The three Type 5 Longbow LRM-5 launchers aid in this effort by providing the mech a way to deliver long-distance support fire. Now this is where I think the value of the Howler can be found. It's a mech that's going to shine when working in tandem with others. With only three LRM-5s, the mech has a tendency to be ignored in favor of more immediately threatening targets. However, the damage from those LRMs can add up, and a savvy mech warrior can make quite a nuisance of him or herself running all over the battlefield and letting those missiles fly. At only 645 battle value, it's an extremely inexpensive addition to a star or binary. As previously stated, the Howler is not an uncommon sight among the second line forces of the Jade Falcons. However, the mech was also sold and traded to the Steel Vipers and Snow Ravens, who had a presence on Marshall. The Fire Mandrills also picked up the Howlers that they could, even though it was a slight blow to their honor to have to purchase something that was taken from them by trial. This dissemination of the Howler helped preserve the mech as the timeline shifted and clan politics ran roughshod over so many other mechs and sources of production. The Falcons did end up moving their Howler production to the Occupation Zone in the Inner Sphere, in order to save time and resources on transport. The new line on Blackjack in the CJF Factory Zone 5 allowed the new Howlers to be quickly distributed across the Falcon Zone of Control. Battle reports from contact with Intersphere forces were favorable. The Howler's speed, agility, and ability to pelt targets with LRM fire at all ranges helped to build a reputation for tenaciousness among the Intersphere forces that thought they were going to have an easier time against Falcon and Snow Raven garrison units. On the Raven Alliance world of Pondicherry in 3150, when a first effigy and light assault group company landed in an attempt to disrupt a suspected buildup of Raven forces instead of first line forces, they ran into a garrison unit which included a star of Howlers. The light clan mechs ran a harassing campaign against the Intersphere unit until their missiles ran dry and they were able to escape. With the aid of infantry and proto mechs, the Ravens were able to hold out until reinforcements arrived. 
In another incident on Blackjack, Falcon Sibco students were pressed into service to defend Jade Falcon assets from a pirate raid in 3147. Though the mech warriors were green, the Howlers did their jobs and swarmed the pirates with zealous fury that was typical for the Hazen era clan. The effective use of both the standard and a later variant with jump jets brought the pirates to their knees as the Sibco cadets threw themselves into the fight without any concern for their own safety. In a cacophony of missile explosions and physical attacks, the Falcons crushed the pirate incursion. Since we touched upon it, let's talk about the later variants of the Howler. This is going to be another case where the variant numbers don't match with the timeline, so bear with me. The Howler, designated as Variant 4, was introduced in 2877 and was the one previously mentioned in the pirate attack. It pulls two out of the three LRM-5s from the mech and replaces them with enough jump jets to send it up to 210 meters or 7 hexes on the tabletop. While obviously this is a big step down on an already modest weapons loadout, the mech was primarily used for training purposes. With a battle value of only 506, if you really want to kick stuff in a light mech, this could be an inexpensive option. The Howler Variant 5 was introduced in 3053 and represents a shift away from missiles and a fire support role to a direct attacker. Armed with 6 ER medium lasers, the damage potential for the Howler 5 is vastly improved, even if the 10 double heat sinks can't support an Alpha Strike with all 6 lasers. I noticed something strange about this design. Three of the double heat sinks are crammed into the left arm, which creates an additional vulnerability for a mech that's already very light in armor. The green or red light on this one's going to boil down to your risk tolerance and mission profile for the mech. If you don't particularly care for the mech while you're piloting it and aren't on the hook for a funeral, go wild. The Howler 2 was first produced by Clan Steel Viper in 3063, and it's a substantial upgrade in technology from the original. The use of a smaller 120XL engine buys some additional weight, which is used on a mask system and four advanced tactical missile systems and two tons of ammunition. This provided the Vipers with a much more powerful Howler that was also flexible at multiple ranges. Unfortunately, it does have only just the two tons of ammunition for the ATM-3s, so commanders and mech warriors are going to have to make the call which specialized ammunition is necessary for any given mission. Still, it's nice to have that option. Now, the smaller engine does reduce the top run speed of the mech to only 87 km per hour, but the mask is there to provide an additional boost back up to 130 km per hour if the situation demands it. The Vipers also came up with their own unique armor layout, which gives their version a unique look in comparison to the original Howler. This variant of the mech is more flexible and powerful than the original, but you're paying for it with more than 100 additional battle value. In 3066, the Snow Ravens got into the Howler game with their own unique variant that takes the mech into yet another direction. They also went with a lighter XL engine and a mask to back it up, but not quite as small as the Vipers. The Howler Devil Variant 3 still manages to hit that 9 hex running distance, which is crucial for light mechs if they enjoy not being molten scrap. The mask does boost that number to 12 if needed. As far as weapons go, the Devil variant has been turned into a sniper with the installation of an ERPPC and a targeting computer. I kind of like this variant, and I think it would be quite useful to have one in conjunction with some of the original variants as well. The ERPPC Howler can take the risk of poking its head out into the open, and the LRM Howlers can rain down indirect fire. Introduced in 3086, the Howler variant 6 is our most recent official refit in the timeline. It sticks with the original standard engine and swaps the weapons for a pair of SRM-6s and the right torso in a shoulder-mounted turret. For those who haven't seen the turret thing before, a shoulder turret allows the mech to shoot from the front or all the way around to the rear of that side of the battle mech. This differs from a vehicle or a quad mech turret which can rotate the full 360 degrees. It's a nice little element to the Howler 6. The two tons of ammunition that the mech carries is shielded by the Case 2, which must be comforting for the mech warriors who are assigned to it. It would be an interesting choice mixed in with the other light mechs or even the original Howler. The added short-range punch might be enough to save or take a life. I'm just surprised an SRM version didn't show up far earlier in the timeline. Now that my plans for an SRM MF variant have been dashed, I had to come up with something new. I was pondering going back to the idea of a Howler star and wanted to come up with a variant that could help the others in a more of a support role. The totally non-canon and definitely useful Howler MF was born shortly after. I kept the engine size the same, but took the leap up to an XL to buy a little bit more weight. 
Next, I boosted the armor by one ton and evenly distributed the points across the mech. For equipment, the mech's primary weapon is a plasma cannon located in the left torso, along with one ton of ammunition. While limited, it does provide some added power to the mech's star and could limit the amount of return fire aimed toward it and its star mates in subsequent turns. I then added a NARC missile beacon launcher to the right arm in order to aid with the firing of LRMs from piers. The two ER micro lasers provide the mech with some weaponry once the plasma cannon runs dry. While clearly not a damage dealing mech, the Howler MF would work well to support the other scout mechs or even the heaviest stars that need to put LRMs on a target. Before I recommended this to others, I had to try it out myself in Mega Mech. So I created a star of standard Howlers and added one MF to the mix just to see what would happen. It progressed pretty much how I expected. The Howler MF did take some fire, but it did narc beacon two out of the three heavier Inner Sphere battle mechs that the star faced. Though the Howler MF did not survive the battle, it did its job and the other four Howlers were able to wipe out the heavier mechs with combined LRM fire. So, mission accomplished. The big question here, of course, is why do we love the Howler, or Baboon, whichever you prefer. I just think it's a neat little light mech that helps mix things up from the standard fare of clan light omni mechs. It's quite capable, speedy, and can do just enough damage to be useful, but not enough that it's a priority kill. Choices have to be made to go after one, and that's a value in and of itself. If you're looking for an inexpensive clan mech to fill out a star or lance, give the Howler some consideration. Thanks as always for coming by and hitting all the buttons if you felt the video was worthy. Going the extra step to becoming a channel member directly contributes to more of this content. It's a pleasure making these videos and I'll keep going as long as I can. Thank you to everyone who's already a member and willing to put up with these shenanigans. Until we meet again, take care and go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.